Welcome into Minnesota Vikings Now. I am Tom Downey, producer Patrick behind the scenes today. We're going to have a fun show for you guys. We'll talk about the running back position. Is it Dalvin Cook next year? Could he end up being cut by the Vikings? And some overall draft conversation as well. Before we get going, though, it's Randy Moss's birthday, one of the greatest receivers to ever do it. Wish him an HBD by spamming 84 in the comment section. So show some love to one of the best to do it for the Vikings and across the board at the wide receiver position. Let's get to today's show, beginning with the Dalvin Cook conversation we've had before, but is very much worth revisiting in light of the latest reports, I'd say, out there on Dalvin Cook. First, from Jenick Eckert, I believe I pronounced that name correctly, on Dalvin Cook, rushing the football is still important in 2022, but the resources are better spent on the offensive line which also helps the running game. Teams that actually have a big-time runner on the team try to feed the back, but passing the ball is statistically the better way to go. The 2022 Vikings had the fourth-highest pass rate in the NFL, and employing a highly paid back doesn't fit what the team wants to do on the offensive side of the football. I agree, and the numbers back that up from an on-the-field and off-the-field perspective. The cap savings matter as you try to manipulate that cap the way smart NFL teams do. The Vikings would save $7.8 million if they cut Dalvin Cook today, and $11 million if they made it a post-June 1st cut, which you could do whenever, but you would not get that salary cap savings until after June 1st. It's a lot of money to be saved at a easier to replace position than others. Now, Darren Wolfson reported this about could Dalvin could take a pay cut. He says, excuse me, I had a conversation this morning that leads me to believe that Dalvin is not inclined to take a pay cut. Now, you're always struggling to pay the pay cut numbers of how much is he going to go down, how much is he going to take. From the Vikings standpoint, you're kind of at the point where ooh, to really maximize your savings, you'd be aiming for Something like the vet minimum, which Dalvin can get more than that on the open market. So I understand that whole conversation. We're going to spend some more time on Dalvin Cook, who producer Patrick, not, not the biggest fan of. But what do you guys want to do with Cook? Do you want to keep him or cut him? C for cut, K for keep. Head down to the comments section, get those answers in for me. It's the pinned comment, by the way, on today's video. So yeah, you know the deal. If an ad break comes on YouTube, just ignore it. Go get those votes in. C for cut, K for keep. I'm of the belief it's time to move on. Cook is not the same runner that he once was. And financially, the savings you get from Dalvin Cook, you can use to upgrade that offensive line. Or maybe more specifically from Minnesota standpoint, make that defense not nearly as bad as it was. I'm not trying to be anti-Dalvin Cook guy, but the numbers really took a dive this year. Rushing yards over expected. Based on what is blocked per carry, what are you supposed to get on it? Well, it was at 2020, 0.81. That's elite numbers. 0 0.34 in 2021 down to 0 0.16 in 2022. The shelf life of a running back, and it's unfortunate, is very short. Dalvin Cook turns 28 this year. There's a very short list of backs who have success into their age 28, age 29, age 30 seasons. And that's what you're getting to at this point with Dalvin Cook. I don't really want to restructure him because I'm worried about the wheels really falling off. Let me look at a guy like Todd Gurley. Injury is a big factor there, make no mistake. But Gurley went from elite to cooked in a year. Like it was a massive, maybe two years, a massive drop off. And the highest paid backs in the NFL, you can kind of look at this production, right, and go, well, Packers didn't make the playoffs. Cowboys did, although Zeke's washed. Titans didn't, although Henry's still great. Saints didn't. Browns didn't. Vikings did. Bengals did. Niners did via trade, but they were paying McCaffrey next to nothing. Cardinals didn't. Bucks could not run the football. Of those 10 guys, the highest paid backs in the NFL, the only ones I think are guaranteed back on their team's roster are like, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, McCaffrey, if they can restructure that deal, everyone else could get cut. Paying him back doesn't normally work out, at least in the long term. Short term, it can benefit. I think the Vikings are happy with the way things have gone with Dalvin Cook, but now you got to make that decision, keep or cut. It's also worth mentioning this part. Now, I don't love using base salary as the number here. This is from Marcus Mosier. I would have preferred to go with something like just cap it, because that's you can 
manipulate those numbers if you're being smart, as you saw with, with Fournette. But this is not a list of dominant running backs, right? Cam Akers, Fournette. You can add uh, seventh-round pick Isaiah Pacheco to the Chiefs. Then. But it was great in that game. Damian Williams, Sonny Michelle, LeGarrette Blunt for two years, C.J. Anderson, LeGarrette Blunt again. Percy Harvin actually outrushed Marshawn Lynch in that 2013 game. Ray Rice, Ahmad Bratch. That is not a dominant list of backs, and I think the general philosophy is it's easier, not easy, not a lock, to build your roster around cheap backs than one around a highly paid football player. Now, we are in a race with the Saints, our Saints channel here, Saints Now, to 15,000 subscribers. We're only a couple hundred subs behind. I would like to crush Producer Trace because that's funny for me. Hit that sub button for free Vikings videos every single day when you guys are subscribed. More now on this running back room and what you do in the event you move on from Dalvin Cook. Alexander Madison's a free agent. Kenny Wongu is an explosive player, which I crave with the running backs. I, I, want, I want burners, guys who will give me those big-time chunk plays. And there's also Ty Chandler, who I think has a chance to be the lead back. I would wonder if, given what the Rams have typically done, despite investing some top 75 picks at the position, would go full-on running back by committee. Producer Patrick has some higher hopes for Chandler than maybe I do. Solid career at both Tennessee and North Carolina, 5.2 average. I wouldn't mind seeing if Kenny Wong, who can be a big-time piece, he was kind of buried behind Brees Hall at Iowa State, and that worked out really well uh, for, for Iowa State and the Jets before Hall end up, ended up getting hurt. But I think in the event you move on from Dalvin Cook, you're not just relying on Wongu and Chandler. You're adding somebody else to that mix. So who will be RB1 next year? Maybe it's Dalvin Cook. Maybe it's somebody not even on the roster right now for the Vikings. We'll spend some time on one particular early round draft target, but get your votes in for me in the comments section right now. While you're down there, click the link to chatsports.com slash Vikings combo. The t-shirt combo pack is available. The best deal out there on Fanatics. Two t-shirts for what normally costs you the price of one with the, you know, it's officially licensed NFL gear. It's always a bit expensive there, but they're great just to wear around whatever you're doing. Rep your team. Get the t-shirt combo pack. Chatsports.com slash Vikings combo. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. Let's move now to Bijan Robinson. Vikings reporter Matt Anderson has the Vikings taking Bijan in his latest mock draft, and we did mine on Chat Sports. I'll, I'll make sure it's linked in the comment section for you guys. I almost put Bijan there too. I don't. He is a very tough player to figure out where he goes for a lot of what Matt Anderson puts here. I should preface that I don't condone drafting a back in the first round, but sometimes a player is just too good. Rumors have surfaced that Dalvin Cook could be on his way out. Meanwhile, Alexander Madison's an impending free agent. The Vikings gain a versatile back in Robinson by taking him here. He's an electric runner, a proficient pass catcher, and has the ability to pass block. I'm a huge fan of Bijan Robinson, the player. When, when I get to eventually stacking my board here, he'll be at minimum top 10, if not top 5, and I, but I don't factor in positional value. Robinson can do everything you want in a running back. He is going to be a really good football player in the NFL. If I'm tearing my confidence levels, he's probably number three on that list. Find guys like Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, and I don't know, maybe Peter Skaronsky, who I think is just going to be a great guard in the NFL. But it's a running back. Does taking a running back in round one in the modern day NFL really make sense? You have to commit yourself to we're going to take him. We're going to give him the ball a lot as our lead back and then move on after four or five years. And the running back's going to get to year three and go, I want to get paid now because you're not going to pay me. And he's going to cause things just like Zeke did, which he has to do because this is his one shot at getting a big-time contract. Of course, he should do that. And then you've got to go, okay, I am, I am on board with investing our most valuable draft asset and saying we're not going to have him around long term. I think in general, if you spent a first-round pick on a player and he's only there for four or five years, you probably didn't maximize the draft pick. That's a very tough balancing act to do because even if Bijan is as good as Saquon Barkley, look where the Giants are now. Are they going to pay him or tag him or not? It's, it's a tough conversation. So that is very tough for me 
to figure out where would I take Bijan. I think ideally, if you fill all of your other needs, if you get cornerback help in free agency, yeah, you figure out linebacker, you go edge, wide receiver, get another interior offensive lineman in there to either supplement or replace or complement Garrett Bradbury, whatever you do at center. If you fill all of those needs and you are in truly a best player available situation, which most teams aren't, they're typically BPA at a position of need, which is how life works in the NFL, unless you just have hundreds of million dollars to spend in free agency, Bears, then I'm on board. But, uh, like, if you're sitting there and you're Minnesota, and Bijan Robinson, let's say, I don't know, Cam Smith is there, or any of those top-end corners, Bijan is probably higher on your board, but corner's going to help your team in a much bigger way, and you can get a back in round two, round three, round four, and still find a good one. That's what makes it so tough. So what do you think is the Vikings' biggest draft need? Let me know in the comment section right now. Is it corner? Right, I'm going there. Producer Patrick is too. Let me know in the comment section. And if you made it all the way to the end of today's video, the full-fledged Bijan Robinson conversation, type real one in the comment section. I'll make sure Producer Patrick shows you some love in the comments.